Uh, yes. It only been a half an hour. It has? Yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> I was very drunk when I came here. I really was. I hugged you really hard, right? Really? We didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the buttons. Uh, Alright, so I got plenty of time. So, uh, tonight, uh, Mary was, we were sitting in the, in the, we were sitting in the hotel lobby getting me drunk, apparently. And I'm writing down these notes, and, and before I left the hotel, I had some notes that I had written down, but I want to rewrite them, because I'm fucking, is anyone else this way? Like, you write, and then you're like, okay. Okay, well, then then arrow to here and then move this first. I will have to rewrite this. You know, you're not going to sit down. And here's the weird thing. Like, I'm all digital now, but, by the way, now that I know that it's only been a half hour, I'm going to fucking ramble. You're going to get six stories before you got to write stories. So, in college, I roomed with a guy named Chris Jackson, and Chris was the guy that found my comic strip in the college paper, and he wanted to be a cartoonist too, and he told me that he saw my strip and went, God damn it. Because he was like, no, I'll never be as good as him, so fuck it. And I always resented him for that, because I felt like that was his, he had already decided that he was out, and he was pinning it on me. I always resented him for that. But we worked on a comic book together. He helped me write that Captain Amazing comic book that I did right after college, and I, you can buy it now. It's what I did in college, but... When we took notes, Jackson brought a legal pad, a yellow legal pad, and paper made felt tip pens. He always wrote in red, but I can't stand writing in red. And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, no. Yellow legal pad and black felt tip paper mates. And I wrote 50 pages of that. We wrote two or three drafts. And now, if I'm going to, if I really need to think, if I don't have a goddamn black felt tip paper mate and the yellow legal pad, I am not as good. Isn't that silly how you, you have those things? No. no. Alright. <laughs> so anyway, I've got my yellow paper and I'm writing down stories. And Mary, who is our archivist, because she remembers everything that Chris and I say, she quotes shit back to me and I don't remember saying it. We were passing this, when she was interning, we were driving somewhere, we passed this um, place called The Dump. And I go, the dump? It's like a store. And she goes, yeah, don't you remember you did a daily affirmation about this? And I go, no. She goes, yeah, the, the theme song goes, drive into the dump. And I go, oh. Why the fuck would you name replace the dump? She goes, you said that. Why don't you call it the shithole? She goes, you said that. You drive a little bit? And I go, yeah. What if you went to the dump and took a shit? And then you would take a dump and she goes, in the dump. You said that. <laughs> Siemens, S E I M, you know, you ever seen that? S I E, and I went Siemens. <laughs> and then she says, but it's spelled, and I go, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Not to a guy, you might as well just call it cum stain. <laughs> what are they selling? What is Siemens? Insurance or something? Engineering? Yeah, engineering my jizz. <laughs> right? Am I right, ladies? <laughs> it is very small. Uh, Either that or just hit. I could lose another 170 pounds and be like, my dick! <laughs> I would be awesome. I'd be like an anniversary gift to my wife. I would keep it a secret until year 15 and then unfail it. Check it. I know you couldn't see it, but when I sit on it, it all I felt it all, trust me. I'm not impressed. That's why she's not here. Uh, so anyway, so we're going over stories, and, and Mary goes, you should tell a story about the clam chowder, because I really like that story. And I'm like, oh yeah. And the story of the clam chowder is, um, I went to San Francisco this last year to go to the Schultz Museum, and we were... I talked to the Cartoon Art Museum, and then we went to Santa Rosa. But it's the first time I've been to San Francisco since I was a kid. And San Francisco's a, San Francisco's a really cool town, you know? Like, it's a really hip town. There's a lot of young people there that are doing really artistic things. And when you're into cartooning and art, you hear about it a lot. I'm there with my parents. 
and my grandmother, and it's awful. And they want to do stupid shit. They want to go on the trolley and take a tour and go to Girardelli Square. And I just want to know what it's like to live there. Like, I was almost in college, but not quite, and really scared about what happens next. Like, now what? Oh, what happens when I don't live at home anymore, and mom and dad aren't there, and that's really fucking scary. And what if I just moved here? What if I packed everything and came here and just found a place, and I couldn't afford it, but it was all right, and I'll make it. And then you do art, and you meet a girl, and she's French, and her name's Anna, and she loves you, and she's petite. And it's <laughs> awesome. And I'm, and I'm like, fucking bummed out, because... I'm stuck here in San Francisco with my grandmother and my parents, and I'm going to be on a bus in an hour and doing stupid shit. And my dad's going to tell me about the Golden Gate Bridge and how it would only take a hundred years, it would only take ten years if, if they didn't keep it up because the sand from the or the salt from the ocean would just disintegrate. Would just, the Earth would just take it back, son. And uh, <laughs> so I'm, I wake up, I get up really early. And I go downstairs. I leave my room. My, my brother and I had a room. So I got up and I got dressed. I think it's like maybe 7.30. Nobody's up yet. And I go downstairs and I start walking a bit. And I'm trying to pretend that I, I'm doing this. Like, all right, I graduated. Now I moved here. And I'm scared. I can't afford my apartment. It's too small anyway. Why did I do this? And I'm just watching everyone and wondering, like, what are their lives? And is he here every day? And what's this guy doing? And there's a street performer, and that's kind of scary. Maybe I wouldn't want to live here. Maybe it's better in Texas <laughs> where it's safe, and I can just go to UNT and dick around. And some guy at a street corner is like, chowder, chowder, sourdough bowl, chowder, sourdough, sourdough bowl. And I'm like, it's 7.30 in the morning. And some guy comes up, and he's like, hey, Phil, yeah, give me cooking. And he's, like, in a suit, and he's just sitting there, and he's eating chowder at 7 in the morning. And I think... I'm going to pretend. I'm going to keep pretending. So I bought it, and I'm standing there, and I'm eating this hot, it's really rainy and cold outside, and I'm eating this hot clam chowder out of a sourdough bread bowl, and then, you know, the chowder's gone, you can get the really moist bread, and you're eating it, this is awesome. And some guy at a bus stop or wherever we were standing, he comes by and he goes, it's good, huh? And I'm like, yeah. And for that split second, like, I was really living it. Like, I was really there. And then I knew I was going to have to go back. I knew I was going to put down, and I was going to go back. And I wasn't going to move to San Francisco, and I wasn't going to play it safe, and I was going to go live 15 minutes away so I could still come home when I miss my mom and my dad, and they could do my laundry, and it wasn't going to happen. But for right now, right here, I am living in San Francisco. I am in that scary apartment. And Mary was saying how coming here to Boston after moving from home in Corpus Christi to Georgia, where SCAD is, and she's, I want to go to PAX. And I'm like, I get your badge. And so she got a hostel. She's not even staying at a hotel. She's staying at a hostel. And she's walking everywhere. And she was walking today, and she's thinking of that story. And she's like, now I'm where Scott is, you know, because, I mean, Mary was born when I graduated high school. And so now I'm 39, and she's my intern. And she's telling me this story, and I'm writing it down, like, yeah, it's a good story. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm doing this now. Like, my life didn't turn out where I thought it was going to be. I can't have kids. I'd love to. <laughs> Here comes a crime. Fuck you, Kristen. That's always you. <laughs> and the booze. <laughs> now I'm laughing. Now I'm my dad laughing. <laughs> Which is something else I don't want to do is be my goddamn dad up here. <laughs> she stays in Texas until August, 